What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another edition of the podcast. My name is Ramon, and today I wanted to talk about Black Mirror Season 5. And the first episode of that season that I saw was Stinging Vipers. Now, this touches on kind of a ethical question or a moral question, really, with regards to marriage and relationships and fidelity. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Season 5, Episode 1, Black Mirror. Now this episode stars Anthony Mackie, Yaya Abdul, and Nicole Bahari. There are other actors and actresses, Palm and Ludi. Palm is from Avengers or as well as Guardians of the Galaxy. And Ludi Lin, he is from Power Rangers. These two characters, I had no idea what they had played in previously. However, I recognized them uh, when I saw them. I felt like there's something eerily familiar about these two. So upon closer look on the IMDb, sure enough, there they were. I've seen them before in other movies. Now, this episode, to kind of just break down the premise and maybe offer a little bit of spoilers. So we'll go ahead and start off with a spoiler warning right here for anybody who has not seen Stinging Vipers, episode five, or season five, episode one of Black Mirror on Netflix. You've been warned. The the show starts out with both Anthony and Nicole's characters, Danny and Theo, uh, meeting at the meeting at a bar and kind of playing just this role play scenario where he comes up to her while she's waiting at the bar and drops that pickup line and kind of just I don't know, like I'm sure we've done this before in in our relationships. I know that. Uh, with my wife and I, sometimes we'll we'll play like we don't know each other and just kind of pick up on one another or give each other compliments as if we're meeting for the first time. And this touches on that. And their friend, Carl, also roommate, played by Yaya, he comes up with some young thing. And you find out right away that the three of them are really close. Two of them are in a relationship. And one of them is sort of the single friend. So we move or transition into the apartment where they're all living. And Theo and, not Theo, Carl and Danny's characters, or Carl and Danny, I should say, they're very close. So you could tell there's there's a kinship amongst them. They've probably been friends going way back, not just starting out friendships as as roommates. And they start playing this game, this video game. And now Danny's character, I kind of feel like he has already kind of shifted gears in his train of thought. In I have work, I can't play games, I have to grow up. Whereas Carl is more just a young at heart, let's play a game, you've got plenty of time before work, let's go ahead and just do this. And, you know, when we're done, then you can go to work. So there's already, they've already built the foundation, they've already introduced who's who and how you're supposed to feel about the three of them and their synergy. So we cut to 11 years later and now Danny and Theo are married. They have a son and it's Danny's birthday. He's out there barbecuing by himself. And I think as parents, we, we find ourselves in these scenarios where we might be having friends or, or a group of people over who are just our children, our friends with each other. It isn't necessarily that we know each other as the as the parents. And so there's just sort of these moments where you're having conversations with people that you know, but not necessarily it's not necessarily like you know them, know them. So it's not it's not the same. And so when Carl shows up, uh, it's pretty much out of the blue or by surprise, because it seems as if they don't see each other as often as they used to when they were younger. Right away, he's like coming up to Danny and Danny's extending his hand like, you know, like we do as 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 adults. We we begin to start shaking each other's hands when we meet. And Carl's like, what are you, an old man on me now? And he, he brings him in and gives him a hug just like old times. 
and he hits them with this gift. And it's the game that they used to play when they were roommates. However, it's like the 10th iteration or X, like the newest version. And per Black Mirror's sort of style of things, it comes with a little bit of technology that we're going to find out is going to be the downfall of some of these characters' lives. So it comes with a little chip that you put on the side of your temple And not only is it to help you play the game, but it actually puts you into the game. Not so much like a like a virtual reality that we have available to us now, but uh, a more advanced version of virtual reality where you can actually see a real person, not necessarily a game sprite. So they're both in the game and they're they've picked the characters that they are used to playing as so Roxette played by Palm and Lance played by Ludi. The best way I can explain this for those of you who are not familiar with video games or fighting it or aren't familiar with the show, you can imagine the game as being like street fighter or Tekken or one of these sort of 2d slash. I mean, it's like a side scroll fighter. And Roxette would be your modern version of, say, Chung Li from Street Fighter. And Lance would be a modern version of, say, Fei Long or like a Bruce Lee style character. Shirt off, ripped. And Roxette's character, like, I don't know, Chinese style or Japanese style garment. So they get into it. They, they're like learning the moves and they start this fighting. And all of a sudden, they start rolling around with each other. And Carl, who is controlling Roxette, ends up kissing Danny, who who is playing as Lance. And this awkward moment between the two of them. I mean, they've been best friends for how many years they've known each other. And now sort of crossing the line in a way that is very, very strange, to say the least. Strange. I say strange because I don't think anybody has. I don't. I don't think anybody would know how to react in that kind of situation. I think you would be, if you are not into, like your buddy. I think clearly you would be put off by it, but conflicted in a sense because it is a female character, and it is like a realistic character. It's not something that looks digital. It it looks very, very real. It looks like a real person. So I think that it really threw him for a loop. And he steps away from this game. He doesn't log in for a while. And he also, to side note, he and his wife, Danny and Theo, are also trying for a second baby. So I think that they they kind of get into the grind. And I don't know if that's really the right way to put it, but kind of get into the grind as as parents when you're trying for baby number 2. For any of any of those any of you out there who have been on that on that path, I know that for my wife and I, it really becomes like not a chore but a task, a job. It's not the intimacy can can fall off in a way and you though you want to maintain that level of specialness and making it great it's also you have this goal of getting pregnant and if it takes a while like a, if it takes a few months uh, it begins to to lose that sort of je ne sais quoi to to put it <laughs> If I can, if I can't find the, another way to put it. And it feels that way for these two characters, for Danny and Theo. It feels like it's now become a job for them. It's no longer like the intimacy has fallen off. And as he's getting older, you see certain things like he has knee issues and he just, he, he feels like he's definitely settling into old age. However, Danny's character is actually only supposed to be 38 years old. So he's not that old, but it, it seems like he's weathered already. And so we we move on. He ends up logging back into the game and his buddy's there like, 
hey, I was drunk. And he agrees, like, yeah, I was drunk too. It was a it was a crazy night, you know, as long as it was a sort of a mix up and you ready to fight. They're like, okay. So they're slowly edging their way closer to each other and then just full blown make out and end up taking it to whatever the limits of these games allow, which I imagine is all the way. And his buddy Carl looks at him, looks back at him after he's done and says, well, I guess we're gay then. And he kind of laughs it off saying that was meant to be a joke. But what is it then? I mean, that's where that was the OMG moment for me. When I saw that they had taken it all the way. I've played MMOs before and other online games that you have a game character and it's not you, but it is you. And though you're controlling this character from outside with a controller or a keyboard on a monitor or a television, it's different. However, in some of these MMOs that I've played, some people do take it too far and they build an emotional relationship with each other over this game, uh, their characters. And that can be a very dangerous, that can be like treading on thin ice because that emotional connection can then spill over into the real world. And there are real world ramifications that happen with things like that when you entertain the idea of building an emotional relationship with somebody. Even though it might seem innocent because you are miles away, divided by whatever digital connection is between you. And these two these two men may have felt very, very much the same way. I asked a coworker of mine how he would have felt put in that same situation. And he had a hard time grasping the concept until I had expressed to him, well, imagine if it was this, like imagine the very first female video game character that you've ever had sort of an attraction to as a kid. Now imagine you're an adult and they've now recreated this digital character to be very human, to look real, to feel real, then what would you do? And he had to pause for a second. Though he's in a relationship, he hesitated. Because where and then lies the line? Some people, the line for them is don't even watch adult cinema. That's a form of infidelity because you are in one way, shape, or form being excited by somebody else. And to other people, that might be okay. A good rule of thumb that I like to use or like to think of is, would I be okay with my wife doing this? And if the answer is no, then I won't do it. Or I shouldn't do it. And... The, the two men in this episode, they end up full bore crossing that line on more than one occasion. And you can tell that the digital relationship that they're sharing with each other, even though they're just buddies in real life, is becoming very real in this digital space. To, so much so that Danny is actually withdrawing emotionally from his wife, Theo, and this, this happens with all affairs. You end up just starting out with some little fling with somebody. And next thing you know, they start to consume your thoughts when you're not together. And you start thinking about them more and more and thinking about the person that you are with less and less. So Theo is definitely seeing the change, seeing the distance or the withdrawal in her husband. And she confronts him about it. It reaches sort of a, a, I guess it reaches a point where she sends him a text asking if he found a babysitter. And he replies back with, for what? And she replies, our anniversary. Thanks for that. And right away, he's just like, gosh, this has gone so far emotionally that 
he's not even thinking about their anniversary. And it's something that I'll admit, as men, more often than not, we don't remember important dates as often. But when your mind is now somewhere else, I guarantee you will not remember these important dates. So they end up meeting, and she arrives at the restaurant early and waits at the bar, and another man ends up approaching her, and he starts hitting on her. And this is fair to say in, in, any, in any relationship that at some point your wife or your girlfriend or your whomever will probably be approached by a stranger and will probably be hit on. And it's one of those things that with loyalty, with trust, you, you know and you understand that you, you act accordingly in those scenarios. And she does. She ends up telling him, sorry, and you know, I don't need you to buy me a drink. She is married. And she shows him the wedding band and he apologizes and then goes on his way. And when Danny shows up and they sit down to eat, she ends up confronting him about how she feels. Telling him all the little things that she's noticing him not doing anymore. And the things in relationships that we just do passively. She mentions how she, he no longer wants to touch her anymore. He no longer places his hand on the small of her back as he walks by while she's doing dishes. These are the little things that we do without thinking for each other that lets the other person know that we're thinking of them or that we love them. And he's no longer doing these things because he's thinking of somebody else. His mind is somewhere else. While he's at work, while he's at home with his family, he's probably in, in his mind thinking, I can't wait to, to log on to this game. And she asks him, is there someone else? I just need to know. And she even kind of admits to her to him as well, like, a man approached me. You don't think that it's hard for me. You don't think I want a little excitement in my life because they were supposed to be trying for baby number two and things just sort of stalled in that, in that regard. And his excuse was that he was just tired. So because of that, they're no longer intimate with each other anymore as husband and wife. And he can kind of say with a straight face because of the circumstances that no, there is nobody else, at least in the real world. Digitally though, and I imagine this is like a semi-new technology and a completely new experience. So it's kind of like the rules aren't set in place yet. My wife would beg to differ and say, no, the the rules are there. (laughs) And he can say with, at least for him, he can say with confidence that no, there is nobody else. So he ends up quitting the game cold turkey, which I, I think anybody put in that situation definitely would. You, you cannot continue to have even a mental affair and not be checked on it and then continue to have that mental affair. So he quits it cold turkey He focuses more on his wife, his family, playing with his son, and there's a happiness again in 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 their family. However, we cut to a few months later. They've now been successful, and she is pregnant, probably soon to be delivering baby number two. And she looks out to him on the while he's sitting in the yard, and I feel like she thinks there's something missing. He's happy, but he's still he's still mentally kind of gone. And his birthday is coming up, so she calls his buddy Carl and invites him over to the house for his birthday. And it's just an intimate affair this time. There's only three three of them. It's not a whole party filled with, you know, your kids' kids' friends or your kids' friends' parents. It's not a party like that. It's just the three of them sort of hanging out and reminiscing 
about the times when they used to live together. And as Theo gets up to to get dessert, Danny looks at Carl like, what are you doing here? And he, he straight up just says, you know, your wife invited me. It's your birthday. I mean, I couldn't say no. She's my friend too. And then he openly admits, I've tried being with other people playing as your character in that game. I've even tried being with the polar bear character, which is kind of odd. It was funny, but he said, it's just, it's something about it. It's you. It has to be you. I can't get there without it being you. And he goes full thirst mode. Like just come on one last time, one last time. And I don't know if any of you have ever found yourself in this scenario when you're stepping out on somebody and you end up kicking them to the curb so that you can then work on your relationship or work on your marriage. But sometimes you're confronted with those types of scenarios. They try to entrap you or honey trap you really into stepping out again. And I've known people who have been in those scenarios who have been presented with those same questions of morality. And I'm not going to speak on whether or not they've how they've answered when presented with those, those questions. But I can tell you that in this show, Danny answers by logging on to that game again. And he ends up, but he ends up switching it up a little bit. And he tells Carl, we need to meet in real life. And when they do, he said, we have to find out whatever this is. We're going to need to kiss each other. And it was kind of funny to me. Carl wasn't even, put off by that. He's like, okay, let's, let's figure this out because I don't even know what this is. And they work their way up to it and they end up kissing and they find out that no, it's, it's not, it's legitimately not a homosexual attraction to one another. It is purely just an attraction to the characters in the game and that relationship, which was really kind of twisted and kind of hard for me to still wrap my head around. I don't know if maybe people who play dress up or role play, if it's the same thing for them, if they sort of step out of their persona and into another one, and it's almost like a split personality. But that was the impression that I got when they reached the conclusion that it wasn't a homosexual desire that they had for one another, but rather a desire for these characters. And so I can't quite remember what Carl says to Danny, but they end up getting into a fight with one another and police roll up and the whole time like my mind's trying to jump to conclusions rather than enjoy the show at this point. But Theo has to pick Danny up from the police station. And I think that's where she kind of pieced it all together. Because it's like, it's 1 a.m. probably or 2 a.m. What are you guys doing fighting? Why'd you meet up and what's going on? He's like, it's nothing, you know, it's just whatever. He he can't, he's been put into a corner now. Now he has to answer for what he's been doing and what he's been feeling. And he looks over to her and you can only imagine that he does admit what it was. But they end up cutting the credits and per Black Mirror style, they do kind of fade in and out from credits to sort of progressive scenes or progression scenes and these progression scenes, they show that it's his birthday again. It's Danny's birthday again. And, you know, his wife has made him food and she kisses him. And it looks as if they're in love again and they've worked it out. And she ends up getting ready. And you see Carl's character. He's logging into his game like he must have moved on. And on the calendar is a, a red X behind him probably signifying an important date. And there, that's when you see that Danny and Carl are both locking on to the game. And Theo's character is getting dressed up, removing her wedding bands and stepping out into the bar. And is, I, for, for my understanding, single for the night. So I think that for them, that's what they had to do 
to continue the marriage. There was going to be this sort of bromance between these two friends regardless. However, it wasn't enough for her to maybe get a divorce from Danny to say he's getting a divorce because he's playing a video game. I think that maybe some people might still have a hard time wrapping their head around the 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 layers involved with this digital affair. And so I think that it was just easier for Theo to probably tell Danny, well, if this is what you're going to do, it's limited to one, pretty much one night a year. And during that time, I'm going to step out too. And for him to be able to agree to something like that really left me a little conflicted. To what extreme or to what level is he addicted to this digital relationship or is he in love with this digital relationship, to probably put it uh, more respectfully, that he would allow his wife to go out and be single for the night and potentially hook up with somebody in the real world. Like, that's different. He's sitting in his home, you know, in this game, twitching around, feeling whatever sensations this game is allowing him to feel. However, his wife is actually out there in the real world. And that, to me, was like a really odd perspective for Danny to have. And an odd conclusion for him to come to given the circumstances. Fidelity is a really simple thing, but I think that a lot of people make it very complex. You stay faithful to the person that you're with, whether you're dating or you're married. And if you don't want to be with that person and you want to entertain the idea of being with somebody else, then you simply shouldn't be with that person and you should be with somebody else. I don't really feel like there's a gray area and maybe it's just because of my life experiences, because of what I've seen other people go through, but it doesn't end very well when you entertain the idea of being with somebody else, whether it's digitally through an MMO online or it's in the real world or even through social media via DMs. Those are foundational blocks that can build up and allow it to spill whatever feelings are there to spill into the real world. And they do have real world ramifications. I think that this show did a really great job of talking about hypotheticals and what ifs. What if virtual reality technology got so much to the point that it looked and felt and smelled like a very real person? Not a digital image that somebody creates or a 3D rendering or a full-on video game character that you can tell even on a 4K TV this is a video game, but a real in-the-flesh person. Where do we draw the line? So that's a question I would like to pass to you guys. What do you draw the line with regards to relationships and fidelity? Is watching adult cinema okay? Is flirting on an MMO okay? When the person may be miles away, continents away even. Where is the line for you? For me... I think that I've expressed it in this podcast and I'm interested. So let me know if you're watching or listening to the YouTube channel. Thank you if you made it all the way to this point. It's a little bit of a longer episode slash review-ish kind of <laughs> kind of setup, but be sure to hit the like and subscribe if you like this content. If you're listening to me on iTunes or any other podcast application, be sure to leave me a thumbs up or a five star and a positive review would go would be great. As always, you guys, thank you for taking the time to listen. And until next time, see ya.